The explosion destroyed everything. Ship 36 detonated during testing, obliterating SpaceX's Massey's infrastructure in seconds. But what Elon declared next? Nobody saw this coming. Instead of announcing delays or damage control, he made a statement that's completely changing Flight 10's timeline. The space industry is stunned. Why would he react this way to such massive destruction? What does this mean for SpaceX's future? Let's dive right in. The setup that nobody saw coming. Ship 36 wasn't supposed to explode that day. Everything was going perfectly. The massive rocket had already passed its cryogenic test back in April. The heat shield tiles, upgraded with new white blankets, filling every gap. The Raptor engines, ready for their first real test. But here's what makes this disaster even more shocking. SpaceX had actually scaled back the test. Instead of a full six-engine static fire, they decided to play it safe, just a single-engine burn, a conservative approach that should have been routine. So, what went wrong? And why did Elon's response completely blindside the entire industry? The domino effect nobody could stop. When that pressure vessel exploded, it created a chain reaction that moved faster than human reaction time. The rupture damaged the header tank lines, essentially unzipping the entire vehicle from top to bottom. Within seconds, the payload bay was ripped away from the methane tank. Opaque gases roared out with tremendous force. The payload bay door went flying, engine parts scattered like shrapnel. The quick disconnect gantry, a massive structure designed to withstand rocket launches, toppled over and crashed onto the testing platform. The methane tank farm, where millions of dollars of infrastructure supported future flights, completely obliterated. But here's the detail that changes everything. SpaceX engineers watching the telemetry saw something that defied all their models. The failure pattern wasn't random. It followed a specific sequence that revealed a fundamental flaw in their understanding. What does this mean? Why would Elon call this destruction the best thing that could have happened? What Elon knew that nobody else did. While the space community expected delays, investigations, months of rebuilding, Elon's internal message to his teams was completely different. Sources close to SpaceX reveal he called this explosion the best thing that could have happened. Why would the world's most successful rocket entrepreneur celebrate a $100 million disaster because buried in the telemetry data was proof of something SpaceX had suspected but never confirmed. The current Block 2 Starship design had reached its limits. Not just this ship, the entire generation. The COPV failure wasn't a manufacturing defect. It was a design limitation that would have eventually shown up during an actual flight. Better to discover it on the ground than 200 miles above Earth with crew aboard. This revelation changed everything. But what SpaceX did next shocked even their closest partners. The secret SpaceX doesn't want you to know. Remember Test Tank 17? That mysterious test article that's been quietly undergoing trials at Starbase? Most observers assumed it was just another routine test for the next booster design. They were wrong. Test Tank 17 is actually validating the internal header tank system for Block 3 Starships, the next generation that SpaceX has been developing in parallel the same generation they plan to introduce for Starship Flights 12 and beyond. But Ship 36's explosion just accelerated everything. Instead of a gradual transition, SpaceX is now considering jumping directly to Block 3 for Flight 10, a move that would leapfrog months of incremental improvements and deliver capabilities that weren't supposed to exist until 2026. Think about what this means. They're abandoning proven technology for something that exists only in computer simulations and limited tests. The infrastructure gamble, the destruction at Massey's wasn't just collateral damage. It was almost strategic. The methane tank farm that got obliterated, already outdated for Block 3 requirements. The testing infrastructure that got destroyed, designed for the old propellant flow rates. SpaceX was going to have to rebuild this infrastructure anyway for the next generation vehicles. The explosion just gave them a clean slate to start over with the right specifications from day one. But here's the risky part. Rebuilding for Block 3 means committing to the new design before it's fully proven. If Test Tank 17 reveals problems, there's no backup plan. 
No fallback to the proven Block II architecture. One test tank holds the future of human spaceflight in its hands. The timeline nobody expected. Industry experts predicted 6 to 12 months of delays after the explosion. They calculated rebuild times, investigation periods, regulatory reviews. Every analysis pointed to Flight 10 slipping well into 2026. But those experts didn't account for SpaceX's parallel development strategy. While everyone focused on Ship 36's destruction, Ship 37 was already undergoing engine installation in Megabay 2. Not with Block 2 engines, with modified Raptors designed for the Block 3 propellant systems. The question isn't whether SpaceX can recover from this explosion. The question is whether they can successfully make the biggest technological leap in Starship's history while the whole world is watching. Can they pull off the impossible? Or are they about to face their greatest failure? The timeline nobody expected. Industry experts predicted 6 to 12 months of delays after the explosion. They calculated rebuild times, investigation periods, regulatory reviews. Every analysis pointed to Flight 10 slipping well into 2026. But those experts didn't account for SpaceX's parallel development strategy. While everyone focused on Ship 36's destruction, Ship 37 was already undergoing engine installation in Megabay 2. Not with Block 2 engines, with modified Raptors designed for the Block 3 propellant systems. The question isn't whether SpaceX can recover from this explosion. The question is whether they can successfully make the biggest technological leap in Starship's history while the whole world is watching. Can they pull off the impossible? Or are they about to face their greatest failure? What this means for Mars. Every failure teaches SpaceX something crucial about Mars missions. But this explosion revealed the most important lesson yet. Redundancy isn't enough if your fundamental architecture is flawed. Mars missions will require thousands of pressure vessels, header tanks, fuel systems operating flawlessly for months at a time. If Block 2 starships have a hidden weakness that shows up under extreme conditions, better to find it now than during a crew transfer to Mars. The Block 3 design addresses these concerns with completely reimagined internal systems. Stronger pressure vessels, redundant header tanks, fail-safe mechanisms that can handle multiple simultaneous failures. But developing this technology requires taking risks that traditional aerospace companies would never accept. SpaceX is betting their entire Mars timeline on unproven systems. What happens if they're wrong? The real declaration. So what exactly did Elon declare after the explosion? According to internal sources, his message to SpaceX teams was simple but revolutionary. We're done with incremental improvements. Block 3 starts now. This wasn't damage control or PR spin. This was a fundamental pivot that abandons years of Block 2 development in favor of the next generation architecture. A decision that either accelerates SpaceX's Mars mission by years or sets it back indefinitely. The space industry is watching to see if this bold gamble pays off. Because if Block 3 works, every other rocket company just fell further behind. But if it fails, SpaceX's competitors finally have their chance to catch up. Everything depends on what happens next. The test everyone's watching right now. Test Tank 17 holds the future of human spaceflight in its tanks. Every pressure test, every stress analysis, every data point determines whether SpaceX's Mars dreams stay on track or face their biggest setback yet. The results will determine if Flight 10 launches with proven technology or cutting-edge systems that exist nowhere else on Earth. Will SpaceX's biggest risk become their greatest triumph? Or will this bold declaration be remembered as the moment they reach too far? Either way, space exploration will never be the same. So here we are, watching SpaceX make the boldest move in aerospace history. One explosion changed everything. Block 2 is dead, Block 3 is born, and the future of Mars exploration hangs in the balance. But here's what really gets me excited. This is exactly how breakthrough innovation happens, not through careful planning, but through embracing failure and turning it into opportunity. What do you think? Is Elon's Block 3 gamble genius or reckless? Drop your thoughts below because this story is just getting started. And if you want to stay ahead of every twist in SpaceX's Mars mission, hit that subscribe button. 
We're diving deep into Test Tank 17's results next week, and trust me, you won't want to miss what we've uncovered. The space race isn't slowing down, and neither are we. See you in the next one, Space Explorers. SpaceX's Starship now has a heat shield that literally sweats. Yes, you heard that right, sweats. At 3,000 degrees during re-entry, while other spacecraft burn their shields away, Starship releases gas through microscopic pores to stay cool, just like your body sweats when it's hot. Why does this matter? Traditional heat shields are trash after one use. Ceramic tiles take months to replace after each flight, but a sweating heat shield? Just refill the gas tanks and fly again in days. Ship 36 just proved this isn't science fiction anymore. Zero missing tiles, mysterious gap filler everywhere. Something big is happening, but here's what nobody's talking about. How do you make this work on Mars where the atmosphere literally feeds the fire that's trying to destroy you? Let's dive right in. The hidden secret in Ship 36. Ship 36 isn't just another test vehicle. It's the most important starship ever built, and the proof is right there in the photos. Loon Compromiser 26. Look closely at the images from April 2025. See those thick layers of gap filler material between every tile? That's not normal protective padding that's never been there before on any previous starship. What you're looking at is SpaceX's secret weapon. This mysterious material covers a secondary ablative layer underneath, a backup heat shield that burns away if anything goes wrong. But here's the mind-bending part. They're not expecting things to go wrong this time. They're preparing to test something revolutionary, something that could change space travel forever. When physics becomes your enemy, picture starships screaming back to Earth at 17,000 miles per hour. The air can't get out of the way fast enough, so it compresses. And when air compresses at those speeds, it turns into plasma. 3,000 degrees of superheated death, hot enough to melt copper in seconds. Every spacecraft in history has faced this same killer. The space shuttle burned through tiles on every mission. Months of repairs, millions in costs. Apollo capsules literally burned their heat shields away, throwing away the protection system after one use. But what if there was a way to fight back? What if, instead of just taking the punishment, your heat shield could actively cool itself. That's exactly what SpaceX figured out. The breakthrough that changes everything, they call it transpiration cooling, but that's just fancy talk for making spacecraft sweat. Here's how it works. The metallic heat shield has microscopic pores, thousands of tiny holes invisible to the naked eye. During re-entry, pressurized gas slowly leaks through these pores, creating a protective barrier around the spacecraft. Why does this work? Gases are terrible at conducting heat. That's the whole reason your winter coat keeps you warm. The trapped air acts as insulation. SpaceX flipped this concept. Instead of keeping heat in, they're keeping heat out. The gas barrier blocks the plasma from directly touching the spacecraft surface. But the real genius isn't just the cooling, it's what happens after landing. The Mars problem that terrifies engineers. Because Earth re-entry is easy compared to what's waiting on Mars. Mars atmosphere is 95% carbon dioxide. When Starship hits it at interplanetary speeds, the physics get brutal. The compressed CO2 breaks apart into individual atoms, free oxygen everywhere, feeding the fire that's already trying to destroy your spacecraft. It's like dousing a bonfire with gasoline. The thermal load becomes so intense that even the best ceramic tiles can't survive. Must call developing a Mars-capable heat shield extraordinarily difficult. He wasn't being dramatic, he was being honest. If Starship can't survive Mars re-entry, the dream of becoming a multi-planetary species dies right there. In the Martian atmosphere, at 25,000 miles per hour, in a ball of superheated plasma. Ship 36, the make or break moment. This is why Ship 36 is different. This is why it matters. For the first time ever, SpaceX isn't removing tiles to test failure modes. They're not pushing the vehicle to breaking point to see what fails. Instead, 
They've installed every protection system they have. Zero missing tiles, complete gap filler coverage, secondary ablative backup layers. But here's the detail that reveals everything. Ship 36 was built from day one with integrated catch hardware. Previous ships had catch systems added later, almost as an afterthought. This suggests SpaceX expects Ship 36 to survive. They expect it to come back home intact. The hybrid solution nobody saw coming. What SpaceX has quietly developed is brilliant in its simplicity. They're not using transpiration cooling everywhere. That would be too heavy, too complex. Instead,